create a Solaris environment, right? What is the minimum requirement? This. To create a Solaris environment, what is the minimum requirement? I have to have Solaris servers. Yeah, okay? This. No, Solaris servers, the first thing, right? So I start with Solaris servers. So you have to take, you have to install Solaris either in a PC or in a Spark machine. So that is the first step. You may need few machines. You may need a lot of machines. First, you need servers. You have to, you have to centralize all your data in one place. And not only data, a lot of other things we'll talk about, right? So, yeah. to install, I, I need the requirement to install first. I can't just go and install a server, right? So I have to know for what purpose the server is going to be used. Okay, so you are installing a server at home. For what purpose you are going to use that server? If you install a server at home. You did already, yeah? So anybody who did install a server at home? Solaris server? Not sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you installed, right? So uh -huh. what purpose did you install? To use different operating system. Yeah, but why you install Solaris? To practice, right? Yeah. So you install Solaris to practice. So your, your purpose is just practicing. Yeah. So you may need uh, a big space in export home maybe because you want to copy a lot of programs there and then install those programs. That may be a reason why you uh, did it, right? Okay. But uh, if you are doing it in a company, you have to find out for what purpose you are going to install. So you have to know the purpose. So you have to plan. Before installing, you have to plan. Right? Without planning, I cannot install servers. Right? So I have to plan. Okay, am I going to install only one server in this big machine? The machine is a million dollar machine. Am I going to install only one server? No. Right? Maybe I'm going to install many servers. So I may be thinking whether to create zones. These are my considerations, whether I should create zones, okay? If I create zones, I can install multiple servers, virtual servers, in one physical server to save space, to save electricity, to save administration cost, right? Many of them, okay? Uh, don't worry about uh, this bin. bin, don't worry about that because you don't need it now. So this is mainly theory today, right? Okay. So you have to plan. You have to find out whether you are going to install individual server in, or you are going to install only a single server in a physical machine or multiple servers. So, okay. can, you, can you explain zone again? So, zones means, say I have one, a big machine, okay? So this machine may be, a, may be quite a big machine, heavy machine, they will transport this machine, so a lot of transporting costs, and they may return after lease, so a lot of expenses involved in there, that pay lease payment maybe, so a lot of expenses are there. And also it occupies office space, so we have to pay rent, right? And also we have to, it consumes a lot of electricity. So expensive. It has about say 64 CPUs, we assume. 64 CPUs, right? And uh, yeah, we assume, maybe it has more than that, 56 maybe, or more than that, right? We can have a lot of CPUs. And it has say uh, 12 terabytes, so 16 terabytes of uh, RAM. Okay, but whenever I check these machines, I don't install only one Solaris machine. One Solaris is running here. But uh, if I check the performance of this, always the CPU is free. Right, if I turn on all the CPUs. If I want, I don't have to turn on all the CPUs. If I don't turn on all the CPUs, what will happen? Then I, I'm wasting the resources, right? So, if I want to save electricity, okay, I don't turn on all the resources. But I'm wasting my money in the investment, right? So we assume that I have turned on everything and I want to make use of this system. But when I check the performance, it's super, super fast. I don't need that. Everything is like CPU usage is zero, memory usage is very negligible, like that. So then I thought, okay, I'm running different applications. I am running a web logic, I'm running Oracle, I'm running SAP, right? I have different applications running in the company. Why should I put uh, all those applications in different different servers and maintain those different servers which will be very expensive for me right and also if so, suppose one server crashes right 
then if I don't have, if I have a copy of that or snapshot of that server, I can get that server back to the last point. So that's an advantage. Moving the server, easy. I'm not going to move the physical server. I'm going to move the virtual server. So it's easy for me to move, right? So all those features are there. So what I did, okay, I divided this machine into the operating system, the main operating system which is running here. I divided that into zones. I created a lot of zones. Right? Then I said, okay, I have 64 CPUs, okay, I will give only two CPUs for this. I will give, okay, maybe five CPUs for this. Okay, RAM, okay, I will give about uh, three terabyte or, or one terabyte RAM for this. Maybe two terabyte for this. Like that I can allocate. And still I have some in reserve area. Whenever there is a need, okay, this server is very slow, okay, allocate more memory if you want to allocate, allocate more CP if you want to allocate. So I can do all of them. So a lot of advantages are there. So these are called zones. The main zone is called global zone. Under the global zone, we have created many other zones, right? Only one administrator, the main administrator will be having the password for the global zone. Right? This guy can go and modify anything here. But the administrators for zones, they, they can play with only their zones. They cannot see what is happening in the other zone. They cannot go and modify in the other zone. So we are isolating the environment. Right? Isolating the environment. Right? And also, if this one crashes, it doesn't affect this. If this one crashes, it doesn't affect this. And when I'm installing the operating system, I may not, I may not, it's not, may not be necessary for me to install all the packages here. I may install only few packages. The other packages, it can, the other details you can get from the main global zone. If I want, I can install all the packages left to you, right? So I have all those facilities out there. I may be running uh, SAP here. I may be running WebLogic here. I may be running uh, Oracle here, Oracle database, like that. Different applications are run in one distribution. So that, that then I, I had to plan with the way. Am I going to use it for that purpose? Right? If I'm using for that purpose, then I design the system in that way. I will take a system which is more which is more powerful. I select my hardware which is more powerful. Okay? Or I will uh, I will plan based on what, whatever I required for a good zone, where, where I can run a lot of zones, okay? Then, other planning is, for what purpose am I going to use it? Okay, so I have a few machines here, which I created here. I, I thought that I should create them as virtual machines. Uh, so I'm going to install SAP, okay? So I'm going to install SAP, SAP is an application, right? So I'm installing SAP. So what SAP requires? SAP requires a lot of swap space. Right? Swap memory should be very good, big, right? It should have a lot of memory. It's quite memory hungry program, and CPU also good, right? So that thousands of users will be using that, and they will be accessing the server fast, right? And applications will be running, so applications should go to them very fast, right? So we need more power. So we plan according to that. Okay, we are using it as a print server. Okay, print server should have a big var. Var. Var school should be big, right? So var file system. It should be a file system. Var must be a file system. Because if var is a directory under the root file system, when var expands, uh, then it may affect the root file system. Because people may be sending a lot of jobs and they may not be deleting the old jobs, right? In SAP environment and all, when we send the job, it can it can stay there for a long time, right? So we can use it to print it again and again, right? So like that, it may be accumulating a lot of uh, print jobs. Your wow, wow file system may get filled up very fast, right? So I should have a large bar. My home directory can be small. My home directory, I'm not going to use it, uh, use it for, can be small. Users are not going to share their information here. Maybe, right? Depends, right? But if I'm using it as uh, as a, as a home directory server, 
then my home directory should be big. So the purpose is important. So, and also not only that, when Solaris is installed, it will undergo a few stages. Any operating system will undergo these stages. First stage is identification tool. In identification, it will ask for the computer name, uh, uh, then uh, IP address, whether it is network, then if it is network, IP address, and uh, time zone, right? All those information it will ask you. So, I have to plan those information. I have to plan what I should give when it asks for the name. When it asks for the name, you don't stop the installation and go and check for the name. So you should know what name. So you should follow the standards in the company. The company may be following a particular standard when they are creating names, right? So host name should be this much. If, if host name is for this purpose, okay. If host is for this purpose, I like to give this name like that, right? So decide on that. Okay, time zone. Where is this server going? Those type of things, right? If it is in the same place, then use the same time zone. But if it is going to be shipped somewhere, give the other time zone, right? So all those things can be planned. Before you do that, you have to know the architecture of this machine, right? When you are, when you are installing Solaris, uh, what type of distribution you are going to select? Whether you are going to select the entire distribution, that I told you yesterday, there may be different type of distribution or software group. That's called entire distribution. Everything will be installed from the CD or maybe end user, or maybe co, or maybe co with reduced network, or maybe uh, development, for developers we are installing, for whom we are installing. So that also important. So you have to know for whom. For developers or for end users, do you need graphics, do you need man page? If you don't need bad man page, then we have something. If you don't do no, need graphics, we have something. Man page is not necessary for end users. End users don't need man page. So we don't have to install man page in end user one. If suppose I want to do minimum installation, only the operating system should run, nobody is going to play with the graphics, then I don't need graphics. Right? So it will save space in the hard drive. Right? Okay. So I just gave you an idea how you are going to decide. So they will have a meeting and they will decide, okay, these are the servers we are going to do. Uh, this is going to be a web server, this is going to be a home directory server, this is going to be a file server, right? So based on that, this is going to be a home directory server, so your export home is to be big. If it is a print server, your VAR should be big, right? Like that. So you got an idea, right? Okay. So that we will learn in this course, right? We are going to learn these sections a little further, further right? But uh, I want you to know why you are learning that, that's what I'm trying to explain you, right? So you will get a big picture, so you will understand. Okay, if suppose I ask you to make a make a car, somebody is bringing a tire, so you are thinking why they are bringing tire. But if I show the car, the full structure of the car or tire is used, then you know why they are bringing tire. So that is the purpose of this lesson, okay? Then how I am going to install now? How am I going to install? How can you install Solaris? From where can you install? From you can install net. Solaris from where? Net. From? From net. Yeah. From net. First from CD-ROM. Uh, first from CD-ROM. CD -ROM. From Flash. Yeah. From we will Solaris. talk about CD-ROM first. Mm -hmm. So in the CD-ROM, what is the disadvantage? If you are installing by C with CD-ROM, you have two DVDs. You have two DVDs for Solaris, right? So, oh, one DVD, sorry. If it is CD-ROM 3, if it is DVD 1, the DVD-ROM now must be 4, I think, right? So, but if it is DVD-ROM, uh, DVD only 1, right? So, what are the disadvantages installing or installing? What are the disadvantages in installing using the uh, DVD-ROM? One, right? one user at a time. On, only one system you can install at a time, but if you want to install 10 uh, systems, then you have to have 10 copies. 10 copies. Making 10 copies is not a big deal, but somebody has to watch 10 systems. So the system is going to ask you a lot of questions because it's an interactive interactive uh, installation. So CD-ROM is interactive. You have to answer their questions. So if installation takes uh, half an hour, you have to spend at least about 15 minutes answering the questions or 10 minutes answering the questions. Right? But in each machine, if I am installing 100 machines, that may be a problem. right? 
in this scenario i assume all my machines in the office are same same almost same architecture same type of installations right uh, all the home directories everything almost same type in that case what i can do is i can create a flash i can create a flash a flash image right so i can like ghost image i create a flash image I install Solaris in one machine. I add all the packages, all the patches, whatever I want to add, all the drivers I want to add. <coughs> then I take a flash uh, image of that. Right? Then I can install that in other machines from the network or locally. Okay? I can copy the flash in a network and I can install from there. I can go put it in a CD-ROM and install in each machine if I want. Even this one I can install from network if you want. Right? So, if I if I am installing a few machines of same type, this is good. Flash local, flash will is, is enough. Local flash is enough, right? But if I am installing ten machines, ten machines once in a blue moon, then this is fine. We assume that I am installing Solaris almost every day, about twenty machines every day, or once in a way hundred machines. Is it a good method to install hundred machines? You are going to pay the person who is installing a good money, right? So it costs a lot of money for the company. So what we should do? Jumpstart. So we have to have something called jumpstart. So we do a jumpstart installation. So jumpstart install is something like what we have in uh, uh, in Linux Kickstart. 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 Or maybe in AX MIM, MIM is something like this. Jumpstart. We we install the Solaris machine over the network. So we have installed we have the media in one server. Then from that server we install into our machines. I can have any number of machines. The speed depends on the power of that server. Right? If the server is fast, okay, good. I can install many. Okay. 